We used to have paper charts, and I used to go to a chart rack, pull out a chart, and only one person could work on the chart at one time. We had a real opportunity to bring electronic records and electronic systems into healthcare, and because of the speed of the adoption, it was a fairly messy transition into the electronic age at the cost of turning physicians into clerks. Before, I could sit across a patient and have a paper chart in my lap and talk to them. Now, often I'm looking at the computer more than I'm looking at the patient. And that tells you that the technology is not necessarily augmenting or assisting the physician, the physician's assisting the technology. In the airline industry, we expect that the pilot of the airplane is going to be supported by technology so that the pilot can focus on getting the passengers to their destination safely. And that's how I see the future of medicine needing to be. We have to return the physicians to the job of providing care. We're actually right on the edge of making breakthroughs. And we're going to turn around a few years from now and look back and say, this is actually when the amplification of human intelligence actually began. We woke up one day and realized we have a microphone and we have an application that 500,000 physicians every single day are touching. We believe that by leveraging our existing capabilities, which include speech recognition, virtual assistance, clinical language understanding, and applying the results of some of our recent advanced work on artificial intelligence, we can develop what we are calling ambient clinical intelligence a capability that will support the doctor in a very meaningful and unobtrusive manner, allowing the doctor to focus more on patient care. That's the exciting part. That's what we're looking for in the future, is to be able to talk to a patient, and instead of me having to dictate something, it listens and understands what I'm saying, what the patient's saying, understands that in real time, and does the documentation for us. In a way that's non-intrusive, that doesn't interrupt the workflow, but really engages the physician to be the best at what he or she does. Understanding, and now intelligence, is really the future of speech. Our ability to inject that into the workflow is going to create a tremendous amount of value in terms of outcomes for doctors and institutions and the administrators in hospitals. Imagine a world that I send this patient home and I have my virtual assistant or the ambient intelligence be able to monitor their usage of their medications, their weight with electronically connected scales, be able to know how the patient is doing and have that information flow directly back. I think that's the goal, is to keep people out of the hospital as much as possible. When you talk to a physician about what it is that we do and what we bring to their lives, they immediately first smile and then they tell you how speech or one of these other products has actually changed their way of life. Our research agenda is focused on the full set of cognitive computing technologies necessary to build towards this vision. We, for example, currently work with all the major automotive manufacturers in the world to build the next generation of virtual assistants. We are also developing virtual assistants for customer care, which can learn from current caller interactions. The applications of these technologies have the promise of freeing the doctors from a lot of tedious and complex labor and allowing the doctor to really refocus on what's important, which is patient care.